Hi everyone, in this video you will learn how to set up an AWS managed RDS database under free tier to get the managed database completely free for next 12 months. We will later on use this database with our NA10 power production setup for your business. This is part 7 of our 9 part mini series on mastering NA10 work production setup on AWS free tier. If you are new here, be sure to check out the previous videos in this playlist to get the full picture. So far, we have covered how to set up an AWS free tier account. Then we have set up MFA and use AWS budget effectively. Then we have discussed all the prerequisites that we must need to install in our local system. Then finally, we have spin up an EC2 instance under free tier we have prepared the server by installing all the must required tools and then in the last video we have also set up our free domain for life to use it with n make sure to watch from the start of the playlist to get a smoother learning experience click on this video to get started all the nine parts of this mini course will be released on this youtube channel over next nine days and I promise you will learn a lot through this mini course. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified as soon as I release the next video. To make things even easier for the course, I have put together a AWS free tier setup checklist for NHN workflow automation engine that you can download from the link in the description. This guide will help you follow along the course to avoid common mistake. With that said, let's get started. We are going to set up RDS as the remote database server. Uh, it's a managed database service provided by AWS. And we are going to use this RDS service to initiate a Postgres database that will be used by our N8 instance. Now, why we are setting up in RDS is because that because RDS is a managed database service, that means you have the highest availability possible in a cloud provider setup. And also, in case, let's say your EC2 goes down or any of the node goes down, then your database and all your customer data and automation data and all the other data basically remains, remains protected. And so it is essential that you have a dedicated database service for your production and workflow automation setup. So we will go to DB instance. We will just do a create database. We will do easy create this time. You can do standard create, but I will go ahead with easy create so that you can easily follow this. Select Postgres because with Postgres, you can get the free tier eligible option. But with Aurora, which is also a Postgres, you won't get uh, the free tier option. So choose PostgreSQL and select free tier. Again, just to remind you, AWS provide a full year of RDS tens with DB T3 micro machine for, for completely free. So please make use of that for your N18 setup. Now I will just give it a name, N18. Choose any name that you would like to use. Master username, I will keep it default. Again, you can change it. Now there are two options. One is self-managed, another is managed in KMS. For now, we are going to do self-managed and we will save the password securely. But in upcoming video, I will also show you how you can actually use AWS Secret Manager to manage your secret. Again, AWS Secret Manager is also free up to certain number of secrets that you can keep. So we will use it later on in the video. But for now, let's use self-manage and let's use auto-generate passwords. In a way, AWS RDS will generate a very strong password for you. So choose that one. And rest thing you don't need to touch really. You can connect the AC2 compute resource directly, but I'm not going to do that at the moment because I will show you how to do that using security code. And then we'll just hit create it. Just recheck everything. Uh, yeah, this is all free tier. So we just create the database. So it is creating. Let's just close this. So it is creating now. It will take some time. Once it is uh, ready, I will come back and I'll show you the next step. So our database is now available and ready. So what we have to do is just go inside the database. Oh, 
by the way i have forgot to copy the password before i have created the database instance if you face the same issue and you forget to copy that password don't worry about it all you have to do is just click on modify and then keep it same self-managed auto generate password and don't change anything just keep everything as it is and then just click continue and you will see a new value of the password just copy this and save it somewhere and then just modify the db instance and this will show you successfully modified so this way you can still achieve or retrieve the password even if you have forgot to copy the password and if you have provided the password during the setup then it's not an um, issue at all now the next step what we have to do is we have to ensure that our ec2 instance that we have created earlier so this is the ec2 instance that we are running at the moment so we need to ensure that our ec2 instance is able to reach to our database right how could we do that so what we have to do is we need to go below and you will find something called security group just click on the security group now in case you do not know what is security group security groups are like virtual firewall for different AWS instances where you can control the inbound and outbound traffic or network flow now what we will do is we will go inside the security group id and at the moment you see there is no security group rules defined so what we can do is we can just edit the inbound rules you can just add a rule and we will say all tcp for now don't worry about it and we will do not not anywhere ip before we will use custom and we select this particular security group now what is this security group now if you go back to the ec2 go to instance id go to networking go to security and you will see that you have this security group launch wizard one which ends with 6e6e that is associated with this ec2 instance right so what we will do is we'll say this particular 66e is allowed to connect to the database on any tcp address or tcp port so we can just say this we can just say ec2 instances of this security group is allowed to connect this on the instance and then we'll just save the rule this will ensure that our ec2 instance is able to, will be able to connect to the database now we again go back to the rds let's refresh it make sure everything is right the other thing that we also have to make a note is this endpoint because this is the public endpoint through which our ec2 instance will connect to this database now what we have to do is next we will go into the ec2 instance where we are we have already done the installation of different components the next final step will be to set up the n810 for production login so i'll see you on the next video with the n810 setup if you're finding this content helpful don't forget to hit that like button so that the mini course reaches out to a lot wider audience like you and also subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the future videos in this series so that's it for today now you know how to set up an aws managed rds database or any application in this case we will use this database with inata in the next video we will learn how to set up in a 10 or production leveraging the domain that we have previously created using nginx using our device proxy and of course if you haven't downloaded it yet don't forget to grab your free aws free tier in a 10 setup checklist from the link in the description below that will help make your learning experience and setup process even smoother so make sure you have subscribed and downloaded the free checklist to follow along seamlessly and thanks for watching take care and i'll see you on the next one